overhead power lines, and buried cables. Overhead power lines have high voltage levels, and any work performed by personnel or equipment in proximity to them must be taken very seriously. A lack of preparation and planning can have disastrous results, especially if contact is made with the overhead power line. My name is Curtis Weber, and as a 17-year-old uh, kid in my third day of a new job, I was injured while working in steel construction building grain bins on a, on a rural farm site in Saskatchewan. Um, I'll remember like it happened yesterday, my mom coming in and telling me, you know, what had happened. Uh, she asked if I knew what happened. I remember saying, yes, I did. And at the, it was at that point where she told me, you know, do you know that you lost your right arm and you lost your left leg? And at that point, um, I, I remember, like I, like I said, like it was yesterday, looking at that arm for the first time and uh, there was no arm there. There was no hand there. And, and I think for me, as a non-electrical worker and those of you that are working in, in non-electrical roles, um, taking the opportunity when you identify something that you're not familiar with or comfortable with, making sure you're taking that opportunity to speak up, ask a question or voice that concern because too often we get into our jobs, we, we're in a rush, we want to get the job done or we don't want to look um, like we're not confident in what we're doing. Uh, all too often we end up with somebody like myself who's electrical shock survivor now with third and fourth degree burns to 60% of my body and, and a double amputee. So I, I would really encourage those people in those settings to make sure they're speaking up and voicing those concerns around those hazards that, that they're exposed to. The limits of approach or minimum approach distance for overhead power lines are legislated in oh and regulations and the OSHA Act. If you will be encroaching on the limits of approach or minimum approach distance, you'll need to contact the local electrical utility for assistance. Similarly, if you're going to be excavating, digging, or performing another type of ground disturbance, be sure to contact your local one-call center to be sure there are no buried cables in the area. If you make contact with and break the cables, there is a high probability you could be shocked or electrocuted. So leading up to my injury, I uh, had actually graduated from, from high school and uh, started working in a, uh, on a summer job uh, before I was going away to play junior hockey in Alberta. So uh, prior to me getting to that stage of, of my life, I was injured on that third day of a new job uh, as a 17-year-old working in steel construction. As we headed out to our, our second job site that afternoon, which was now putting us into having an extremely long Friday uh, before the long weekend or possibly having to come back on a Saturday, uh, our mindsets changed from being, uh, you know, excited at the opportunity to be home early for that long weekend uh, and getting out to our, our second job site. We identified that there was an overhead power line in and around where our workspace was. Um, and in this particular job, we were setting up a, a steel grain bin and putting that bin on top of a hopper bottom. Uh, so that hopper bottom is a steel structure. Uh, cylinder structure. Um, it's surrounded by steel. There's legs there. So as we uh, discussed the hazard, we, we identified that it had the potential um, to, to kill somebody that day. We did a good job of, of identifying the hazard, doing a, a hazard assessment and risk assessment of what could happen if things went wrong. Uh, after we discussed the fact that it, that it could kill somebody, um, we didn't put a control in place to make sure that that didn't happen. And about 15 minutes later, as I was holding on to that steel structure, we made contact with the overhead line and that overhead line sent 14,400 volts of electricity through my body in three separate cycles. Where I was situated, I was surrounded by steel, so as the electricity tried to eject me out of that live zone, it threw me into one of the legs of the hopper. That's what triggered the second cycle of 14.4 to just go through myself alone. After that cycle had gone through, um, it tried ejecting me out of that live zone again, just throwing me right back to where I started from, triggering the third and final cycle of 14,400 volts. Electricity went through my body and through the right side of my body, taking with it my right arm just below the elbow, exiting out my left leg just below the knee. So uh, obviously the amputations and, and the burns were, were visible. I, I had uh, just over 30 surgeries in Saskatoon in, in about a six and a half month period that I was in the hospital there. So kind of every other day they were going in and, and, and the burns, what they do is they don't, you, the, the significance of the burns uh, isn't known right away. The burns can go deeper and deeper as the days and weeks go on and that was the case I was going in. The recovery time after the initial six and a half months that I was in Saskatoon in the hospital there was about six and a half years of my life completely consumed by that one um, that one failure 
on my part individually by not speaking up and voicing that concern. As a 17-year-old kid on my third day of a new job, I didn't feel comfortable enough going to my peer workers and saying, hey, there's an easier way to do this, um, a safer way to do this. Uh, instead, I, I kept that to myself and, and uh, took the initiative to steady that structure from, from the wind. So, and us organizationally is not having a system in place to address the hazard that we just talked about that could that could harm somebody or kill somebody that day. It's an eye opener, but it was something like I said that never affected me um, in a negative way. I wasn't scared. I wasn't angry. I wasn't depressed. It was something that I was instantly tried to figure out ways how to move forward and, and get back to doing the things that I used to do that I love to do. Be sure you're aware of the limits of approach or minimum approach distance before conducting any work near overhead power lines or buried cables. If you're unaware of the voltage of the overhead power lines, you should remain a distance of at least 7 meters or 21 feet away. Contact the electrical utility if you need to approach any closer.